this is Fem Powered Collective. Now, for those of you who don't know what Fem Powered Collective is, which I doubt most of you will, because we have literally just launched, we are a business support and networking um, brand for women in business. That's to say that this webinar is only for women. It is absolutely not, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, but I was cheeky really and wanted to just use Fem Powered Collective as the kind of driver for this webinar because we are all about giving women. Um, who are just starting out, just starting the business. A lot of women um, over the past 12 months have wanted to start a business from the kitchen table. Um, and it's been absolutely fantastic to meet and network with so many fantastic women. Um, then I thought that we just needed a, a, a support and networking group that would help people get off the ground and find their confidence. So we're running some free um, support sessions. The next one's on the 24th of February. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this one is for uh, women, not for men. Um, <laughs> So if you're a woman, you're just starting out, or if you work on your own um, and you've been established for many years, but you find that you do you do get a little bit isolated in your business, then please take a look at our website and, and see what we can do for you. So what's going on with my PowerPoint here? Every time I have to press everything twice. Um, that's me. That's Sophie Metcalf. Um, and Simon Hudson is my partner. Um, and we are actually the Sophie Group, which is a marketing agency. We're based in Pocklington in East Yorkshire. And we are all about marketing for growth. So, well, I say we're an agency. We are now going down more the consultancy route. So the last 12 months um, of lockdowns and business changes um, and pivoting the way that we're doing things, we are very much now going down the consultancy route. So we come into businesses and help them with the marketing, advise and get them, um, get their strategies off the ground um, and really help drive the business forward. So that's the sophiegroup.co.uk. Um, and then under the Sophie Group umbrella, we have Fempower Collective. So we are newly HubSpot um, partners. So HubSpot is a CRM system that we have just fallen in love with. Um, and it's something that's absolutely revolutionized the way that we communicate with our customers. So we're now a HubSpot provider. We would love to recommend that to you. So if you've got any questions about HubSpot and CRMs and how you can um, talk to your customers better through marketing, servicing, and, and it helps your sales as well then uh, give me a shout after the webinar. We're also WordPress experts. We've built, um, coming up to 100 WordPress websites um, in the past four or five years. So I think we kind of know what we're doing with that. WordPress is a fantastic platform. Wouldn't recommend any other um, any other platform for your, for your website. Um, so websites is something that we do as well and we're also registered with the Chartered Institute of Marketing. A little bit of good news today is that I've just got my results, not that I want to brag, but I've just got my uh, my final results for my diploma in professional marketing, my level six diploma. So that came through uh, yesterday, last night, so I'm pretty chuffed with that. So we've got a couple of other webinars that we're running as part of this One Yorkshire series, uh, part two of this webinar. Um, so today we're talking strategy, we're also then going to talk about creating content. So we're going to go down the creative route on the 26th of February. Uh, yes, Friday, the 26th of February, same time, um, and sign up via the Yorkshire Mafia website for that. So that follows on really nicely from this webinar. And then we're going to run um, under the Sophie Group umbrella. We're going to run the Scale Up Your Marketing Strategy webinar on Friday, the 5th of March, again, at the same time at one o'clock just because I feel like that's a really nice time to do a webinar. It's the end of the week and your brain's probably thinking about the weekend and you actually just want to do something else than answer emails. So um, please join us for that and sign up through the Yorkshire Mafia website. So why are we here today? That is a good question. So we want to rethink how we plan our content marketing strategy. Like I said today, we're talking very much on the strategic side. So this is very much strategy, planning, setting objectives. Um, and less about the creative side that will come in the part two webinar. We want to learn how to use content to build your audience and leads, and also putting your content strategy ahead of your social media strategy. So this is very much strategic thinking, which is what I'm all about. So just if you have a question as we go along, there is quite a lot of content, which is um, good for a content marketing webinar. Um, as I'm going along, please do put a question in the chat box. If I don't get to your questions straight away, I am going to spend some time at the end of the webinar. Uh, will the slides be available afterwards? I can. If you want me to send you the, the slides, please do drop me an email. I'll mark that details at the end. Um, I'll do that on WhatsApp. Um, 
So if you've got a question, please pop it in the chat box. I'll try and answer it as I go along. But what I probably will do and what I found last time is that people will ask a lot of questions at the end. So I'm going to do a bit of a Q&A right at the end as well. And also you may find at the end of the webinar that your brain's just gone a bit, Ugh, this is a lot to think about. Um, go away and have a think and then please do get in touch. I'm all about connecting on LinkedIn. You know, send me messages on LinkedIn. Drop me an email next week if you've had to think about it and you're not quite sure how to go forward from today um, from all the amazing advice that I'm going to give you. So please do get in touch again. So I am, uh, you know, I've got an open door, um, literally, virtually. Uh, <laughs> so for this recipe, you will need. So this slide is very much about for a content strategy. What does your organization have available? What do you have available as a business owner? What does your team in terms of expertise, knowledge and the tools and resources um, to be able to make a content strategy work for you? So really really important the central part of a content marketing um strategy in my opinion is your website so a customer facing website is something that you need and a basic understanding of seo as well um again i always recommend wordpress um it's a fantastic platform and i'm not talking about the user made um websites it is really easy to go and set your own website up but i do recommend having a developer involved if you've got someone who knows what they're doing that they can develop a website from the ground up, but not just using a template. Um, it's something that is completely bespoke to your business and your marketing needs. So your customer facing website is really important and that it's developed properly. The ability to easily implement content on your website is also really, really important. Um, the amount of clients that have come to me in the past and said that you know they want help with the marketing, they've got a website that they've paid money for, but they haven't got any access. They, you know, perhaps the developer hasn't given them the access that they need to be able to go in and um, develop the website further themselves. That's really, really important. Um, making sure that you've got access, that you're able to just go in, you're able to make changes, or you're able to hand it over to um, somebody that you may be outsourcing to. So you may be outsourcing to a freelancer who's helping you with your marketing or your organization who looks after that. So you may have a marketing manager or a website manager. So the ability to be able to manipulate and change your website and grow it and develop it. Um, it's really easy to think that a website is something that's just static, that it's like a, you know, it's almost like a leaflet um, or a brochure that you have printed once and then it stays the same. It's not like that at all. A website is something that grows with you um, and it's something that you develop over time. So that's really important. And of course you need the people or the skills within your organization to update that content. Um, and I always say that Content marketing, content strategy is 50% creative and 50% technical as well. So they have to have the knowledge and skills to understand, you know, the, to write great content. You then need to know how to implement that on your website properly for SEO um, to make sure that it looks great on social media as well. So there's a lot of skills involved. And then also basic knowledge and understanding of social media as well. And then a CRM system, which can deliver, help you deliver and organize your marketing um, and all the communications that you put out there. Again, a little plug for HubSpot. So if you've got any questions about HubSpot and um, using CRM such as HubSpot, then please do come to me. So my marketing mantras then, before we get started, there is no right or wrong way. There's only efficiency and effectiveness. And I cannot stress this enough. There's no wrong way of doing your marketing unless you're gonna go out there and completely offend people that's not what you want to do that's definitely a wrong way there's no right or wrong way it's very much about trial and error testing and refining your marketing over time so this isn't something that you're going to go away and implement and all of a sudden within a week overnight you're going to have a content strategy that's going to work for you this is something that takes a lot of time preparation trial and error to get right and essentially being realistic with your time and resources as well. So knowing what your organization, and the people within your organization, or knowing what you yourself are capable of with your content strategy, that's really important. So you have to be realistic. And just because you can doesn't mean you should. So just because your competitors may be doing loads of silly stuff on TikTok does not mean that you should as well. That's really important. So... <laughs> This is a model for our content strategy that we're gonna follow throughout this webinar. So 
we always start with your goals and objectives um, and everything that we do feeds in from your wider marketing or business strategy. So we're going to talk about that more um, in a moment, but this just gives you a sort of an overview of how we're going to structure this webinar and how you should structure your content strategy. So starting with goals and objectives, setting your goals and objectives. So are you wanting to gain more leads from this content? Are you wanting to grow your email database? Are you wanting to increase traffic or simply grow your audience? So we will talk more about that in a moment. And then research, really important, and that's my favorite bit, researching customer research, getting under the skin of your customer, understanding what they want from your content and how it's gonna be useful to them. Um, and then also keyword research is really important and competitor research as well, which I don't go into too much detail today with competitor research, but I do find that it is really important to look at what your competitors are doing and also benchmarking against really big brands. So perhaps they're within your industry or they've got a strategy that you can take little elements from and gain inspiration from is really important. Then planning as well. So thinking about your content timelines, how long it's gonna take you to create this content and implement this strategy, what you need, resources, etc. The budgets and costs is something that's really important as well. So it, you, it may be very well that you go out and plan a really elaborate campaign strategy that uses loads of content, um, but then if you don't have the budget to be able to implement it. So again, it's taking you back to what's realistic for your organization and the skills and resources. Then producing, so that's the creative side. And we're gonna to talk today about the timescales and re setting realistic timeframes for producing all this content. Um, that's something that is really easy to fall on the back foot with. So, you know, you may think, right, I'm going to produce all this wonderful content that's going to gain me so many leads. It's going to be an absolute lead magnet, this campaign. I'm going to build my audience massively. I'm going to have a huge database from the back of it. I'm going to launch it in a week. And then it comes to the day before and you go, oh, actually, this is this is going to take about three months to actually pull all the resources together to actually launch it. So being realistic and kind of working backwards from the, the campaign of what needs to be implemented and the time that that's gonna take. And then analyzing and refining. So this is where your effectiveness and efficiency. So as your campaigns and as your content strategy gets underway and you're starting to see growth in your audience, is it, being, is it effective and is it efficient? So for all the amount of time that you're putting into this strategy, is it actually worth it? Are you actually spending more time than it's worth? Is it costing you more money to implement this strategy than it is? That doesn't mean that it's failed. If something, you know, if you don't feel like it's worth it, it just means that something needs to change. So that's why analyzing and making sure that you're hitting those effectiveness and efficiencies and measuring your key performance indicators against your objectives as well. So why is a content strategy important? So we always say content is king. And that, would you believe, is a little crown on top of the word content. Would you believe I used to be a graphic designer and that's the best I could come up with. So <laughs> that's a side point. So content is king. Content can feed into all your other strategies. It can feed into your social media strategy. It feeds into your advertising, your digital advertising. So your social media ads, your pay-per-click. So things like Google advertising, it feeds into that. Feeds into your email marketing your SEO as well. So you'll see that I've put two arrows between SEO and pay-per-click back into content. That's because I feel like with SEO and pay-per-click, with Google ads, through keyword research, it's actually feeding into each other. So you've got this lovely cycle of you're creating wonderful um, Google adverts that's getting loads of clicks. They're coming through and seeing all this fantastic content, but then the content as well can um, dictate the, um, the adverts that you're putting out there as well. So it's really important that you understand that content should be the central part of a content media of a content strategy obviously um but i always say that you can't have a social media strategy without content you can't have a digital advertising strategy without your content and you can't have a content strategy without research it all has to be well researched well thought out and you're hitting the spots with your um with your audience and that you're going to be drawing people in so we're going to talk about the customer customer, um, what's it called, in, uh, in a moment. Come on, there we go. My PowerPoint's been really slow today. 
So content gives your audience everything they need to know before they buy from you. That's why it's really important. That's why we say it's king. And crucially, content builds trust between your customer and yourself. They know that you know what you're talking about. They're understanding that you are the expert in your field and that builds that trust and they're going to go, I'm going to come to these people and I'm going to buy from them. And that's where your customer research is really important. So what is content? It seems like a really obvious question, but I always say content is everything your audience can read, view, watch, listen to, or sample online. And I split these into three categories. So content split into three categories. So you've got brand or descriptive content, curated content and user generated content. So your brand content and descriptive content is everything on your website, everything that they can read about you, about your company. So your company information, all the about pages, your team pages, um, product descriptions. If you're an e-commerce site, all your products will have product descriptions that is classed as your descriptive content. Um, if you provide services, you have to make sure that they're really well thought out. The wording is really easy to understand. And the customer knows that what they're going to buy from you is exactly what they need. So it's all descriptive. So it's exactly what you do on, on the tin. Um, things like case studies and imagery as well. So the imagery and the design of your website as well, that is all classed as um, brand or descriptive content. So we're going to focus mostly today on curated content. So curated content can be everything from news and PR. So good news, the PR that you put out there, the stuff that you get into newspapers, onto the radio, um, informative blogs. So this is the content that you may spend a lot of time creating, how-to guides, eBooks, downloadable content as well, things like videos, Imagery, again, so curated um, image galleries that really showcase what you do as a brand and then your social media as well. So the content that you can put on social media that doesn't necessarily also go onto your website. So when you put things like photographs um, and you may put a post out there, a bit of information out there that doesn't need to go on your website, but you'll use social media as a channel um, for that. And then user generated content. So this is things like reviews, influencer content, forums. So it's everything that your customers are doing for you. So this is all the marketing that they're doing for you. So all the testimonials. So um, testimonials that you have on Google, for example, testimonials that customers may send you, send you um, feedback. So using things like feedback forms to create that content, because that then becomes another marketing driver for you. And that is another really important part of um, your content strategy but we're focusing today mainly on curated content so this is the stuff that you have to put the most effort into generally so linear financial solutions is a um, one of our clients actually it's a, um, a website that we've been helping to develop over the last 12 months or so um, and a big part of what we've done for them is implement um, a blog feed so and the reason we've done this is because that they are, we believe, experts in their field. They are um, a network of mortgage advisors, mortgage and protection advisors. Um, and they've got advisors across the UK. So localized, um, they had absolutely no localized marketing. So they weren't easy to find on Google when you Googled them, when you Googled for a mortgage advisor. They weren't easy to find when we first started working for them. Um, they also didn't have any content on the website that actually kind of explained what they do or explained anything about their knowledge. It was just sort of a, if somebody stumbled across their website, it sort of said what they did and it had a phone number for them to ring. So we've completely changed the website. We've added loads of um, descriptive and brand content on there. Then we've also um, incorporated a blog feed. So the blog feed has, I mean, when you hear the word blog, sometimes you think it's a little bit sort of a wishy-washy term that it's just somewhere that you go and sort of write a diary of what you've done at work kind of thing. What When we say blog, we actually mean it's a feed of content that is really valuable and actually drives um, customer engagement. So we've put on there loads of different guides. So you can see on there things like um, Blue Monday, don't feel overwhelmed about debt. Um, the financial health check, making sure that your home insurance policy is right for your needs, everything on there that um, 
gives the customers an understanding that you know what you're talking about. And also each of those blogs, each of those articles gives actual real valuable advice. And I'm going to come on to the steps of the customer journey and how that um, helps the customer make the decision to come to you. But at the end of the day, curated content is there to drive people to the website. So using search engine optimization, using Google, all the articles and information that we know that the customer needs, we can then use that on social media as well. So the content isn't just sat on the website doing nothing and sort of hoping people find it. It's also being used on social media. So the content feeds into the social media. But interestingly, we don't actually rely with linear. We don't rely on social media um, to drive traffic to the website. We actually rely on Google quite heavily. Um, and the strategy is very focused on using keywords to get people to stumble across um, linear and find it. So good content then. Good content is useful, informative, and timely information. So that's easy to find and it's easy to understand. So this helps you understand that everything that we do for Linear, everything that we've put on that website, all the articles on there is useful, it's valuable to the customer, it's informative, it's timely as well. So we have um, lots of information going out at the moment, very much around um, things like furlough, what your rights are as somebody on furlough, whether you can get a mortgage and um, how it's going to affect your credit rating, that kind of thing. So it's all really timely um, and fits in with trends of what people are searching for at the moment. Also, it's easy to find information, really user friendly and easy to understand. So webinar two at the end of February, um, I'm going to talk very much about writing content, um, which fits in with this content strategy. And when I say easy to understand, what I mean is it's all written in layman's terms and your content has to be um, easy to read. So you're not writing it like it's a beautifully written novel um, with loads of descriptive terms. It's actually really simple English, plain English, layman's terms, um, jargon busting, that kind of thing that's really easy to understand and really easy to read because people don't want to have to think too hard when they're reading your content. Um, so one fantastic example of a content marketing machine is money saving expert. And I always look at this for ideas um, and look at the way that money saving expert curates their content and the way that they update it. And then the way that they feed it out through their different channels as well to get people to keep coming back to the website because that is your ultimate goal. So I will talk towards the end as we go through the customer journey a little bit more about money saving expert and how they do it. But when you go on the money, money saving expert website, website that's hard to say. You can see that there's loads of timely information. This screenshot, by the way, was taken, I think, um, in January. So, yeah, because it's got Happy New Year on it. So, that's not massively up to date, but you always get up to date, to the point, really easy to understand, um, in, with loads of links that take you out to their affiliate website. So, um, loads of downloadable guides, that kind of thing. It's a really great example of a content marketing machine. Um, and then, of course, when you go on their social media, so when I say that they don't use, so when we say don't use social media as a driver back to your website, it is just sort of a supplementary channel that you can put your content out there. When you look at Money Saving Experts Facebook page, for example, they'll put posts on there. And you can see from these two posts here, they don't get a massive amount of engagement that's because they've already got their customers bought in because the customers are coming in through Google. Um, so they're not relying on social media to drive people back to the website, or to drive people to the website. They're kind of using social media as, well, it's a platform there that they know people are going to be following them, but they're not necessarily going to be relying on Facebook to drive people back to the website. And then of course, they've got a huge, vast, wouldn't be surprised if it was in the hundreds of millions database, um, email database, sending emails out. Their emails are fantastic. You land straight on the website, you sign up to the email mailing list, and then every, I think it's every couple of weeks or every week, or is it every month, I can't remember, you will get an email in your inbox with loads of money saving tips. And then all those links drive people back to the website. So a little bit about advertising versus organic content. So advertising is your targeted ads with a short sales funnel. So things like 
Um, if you have products that you sell online, so if you're an e-commerce website, um, it's a really short sales funnel when you use targeted ads. So for instance, on Facebook, um, you'll pile out a load of adverts promoting loads of different products that are shown to a very niche audience that are targeted at an audience that you know are gonna buy from you. Um, so for instance, I always get adverts for shoes because I buy a lot of shoes. <laughs> Um, so I'll get adverts from shoe or office that say, hey, you're going to love this pair of shoes. And I'll go, yes, I love that pair of shoes. And I'll click and then I'll buy. So it's a really short sales funnel. It doesn't take long for me to go, oh, pretty thing. Click buy. So that's how advertising works very much or how advertising can work for you on social media, different for every business. Um, it's really good for lead generation as well. So um, you may get adverts for come and um, come and have a go at this free trial um and you'll basically click it'll take you through to a landing page and then you put your in, your details in and then you get that free trial or however it works for whatever um business that you are and then audience building as well so advertising is very good for that versus organic content so advertising versus organic content with organic content this is all your curated content that you're putting out there and it's a very slow burner it's more of a drip feed process with organic co content so it's there to build trust. It's there to capture your audience at different points in the customer journey. Um, good for building trust, your lead generation. It can work for that. Brand awareness. Um, it's also It can also be engaging content. And that all has a knock-on effect for sales. So the two very much can work together. So if you've got a con an organic content strategy, make sure that it's tying in with your advertising strategy as well and that the two can connect and talk to each other. So let's go back to our content strategy then. So we're gonna go through each point. So step one is your goals and objectives. So let's think about how what our goals and objectives are for our company, for our organization. So you may have heard of SMART um, objectives. Now SMART is something that marketeers love um, it's something that's used quite a lot in the um, corporate world. And there is a reason for this. And it is something that you should really incorporate when you're working on your marketing strategy. So SMART stands for your goal has to be specific. You need to be able to measure it. It must be attainable with your skills or resources. It must be, oh, I've just realized I've got one, two, three, three there. It must be realistic. <laughs> and measured within a set time frame. So that's your smart marketing objective. So if you can create an objective that covers all these points, um, then you know that it's something that you can actually use to measure and refine your strategy moving forward. It's not enough for you to say, okay, I want to increase my brand awareness. That's my objective. I want to increase. That's my brand objective. That is not a measurable objective. So you have to go through these points. So we're gonna give you some examples now. So here's one example for a content strategy. One, or, uh, one objective could be, I want to gain 20 quality leads from my website within three months. That is specific, it is measurable, um, it's attainable, it's realistic, frame set to it. So. That's a good lead, oh, put those in the wrong order. That's a good lead generation objective example. Say an audience growth objective. I want to increase my email database by 50% in the next six months. So you write these objectives and you stick with them um, throughout your strategy. So when you come to do your analyzing and refining to see how well it's worked, you can look over, so you can look at six months and go, has my email database increased by 50%? Yes, it has, fantastic, we hit the objective. If you're thinking we're not going to hit this 50% in, in another three months, what do we need to do to tweak the strategy to make sure that we do hit this objective? So you understand that it is really important to have objectives so that you can measure and you can understand that you are on the right track with your strategy. Another audience growth um, example would be, I want to achieve 100 downloads of my free guide in three months. So. At certain points within that three months, you're going to look and go, are we hitting it? Are we going in the right direction? Are we going to get 100 downloads in three months? 
and if you know that we're not getting we know we've only had two downloads in the first month what do we need to do to change and tweak the strategy what do we need to do what's not working how do we uh, fix this before the three months is up so it's all about making sure that when you come to test and analyze that you know that you're going in the right direction Okie doke. So research is step two. So this is all about knowing your customers and knowing exactly what they want. So like I said before, research is my favorite part um, of the strategy. I'm an ex-journalist, so research is something that comes quite naturally to me because I'm always trying to uh, look around and see how we do things better and trying to uncover stories um, and understand what's going on. So research is really, really important. So First thing that I would say is important with researching your customers is doing something called a customer persona. So if you haven't done a customer persona, just give me a, a little nod on the chat or uh, give me a little thumbs up if you've ever created a customer persona. Because this is something, it's a really worthwhile exercise to do. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Um, it's really worthwhile. It's actually quite a fun exercise and it's something that you can get your whole team involved in. So creating a customer persona is actually, it's almost feel, it almost feels like a little bit of a game. And when you're doing it, you kind of think, why am I doing this? But you're building a sort of virtual person. Um, so that's based on your actual customer base. So here are just some of the, the points of a customer persona that you need to include. So who is your customer? Give them a name, call them John Smith and say, John Smith is my um, typical customer. He is um, a financial advisor. He earns so much in a month, uh, in a year, sorry. His, he spends most of his time on LinkedIn. He doesn't go on Facebook. Um, he likes reading um, self-help guides. You know, you go really, really specific with it. Have a look online. Um, if you just type into Google customer personas, it gives you so many different examples of what a customer persona is and how detailed that you can be when you build your customer persona. Um, if you also take a look, if you Google the Lloyd's, um, Lloyd's Banking Group customer personas, they did a fantastic case study on creating personas. Um, and it's something that I've, I've kind of referred to quite a few times. Um, that's the Lloyds Bank one. I think it was Lloyds. Yes, it is Lloyds Bank. Um, it gives you some really good examples of how you can split your, if you've got different types of customer, because it may be that you've got different um, customer segments. So create a persona for each segment. Um, going really specific on who they are, what the age group is, what their pain points are. Um, what influences them? What, what influences them? How much money do they earn? Um, what's their family life like, that kind of thing. It's a really worthwhile exercise to do. Um, and the reason why is that you're wanting to get under the skin of your customer from being unaware of you to then becoming a loyal um, brand advocate for you. So this is the customer journey that I mentioned before. This is a really useful model when you're doing your research of understanding how your customers perceive your brand from being completely unaware of you. So let's say, for example, let's assume that there are thousands of people out there who have never heard of you, who have never heard of your brand at all. They don't know who, they, who you are, never heard of you. They are unaware of you. So this is the first point on the customer journey. They don't know who you are. However, they may have a need or a problem that you can solve. So what do they do? Nine times out of 10, particularly the generations now, they're going to ask the internet. So they're gonna to go to Google and they're gonna ask a question. From that point, once they ask the question they're given on Google, they'll be given a list of massive results. I'll give you some examples in a moment um, that helps them answer that question. And they stumble across lots of different brands that are answering that question for them. So they have the answers or the solution and then they spend time with you. So when I say they spend time with you, what they're doing is they're, they've clicked on your blog because you've answered that question and they're spending time on your website and that is crucial. And then they start to consider you. So are you trustworthy? How do you compare to other brands? So we're focusing on the first three points of the customer journey. You'll see after that from the purchase point, there's then retention and loyalty, but we are just talking about the first three points here. This second point, 
once they become interested in your content, that is a crucial moment where you can capture their details. So when we talk about content on the customer journey, all these different touch points, what does that say? So in the unaware phase, the different tactics you can use include things like your keyword strategy, so your search engine optimization, um, even on YouTube, thinking if you put videos and content out on YouTube, making sure that you're using the right keywords and that you're going to be found. Um, things like podcasts as well, making sure the keywords and, and it's all set up properly. Um, and then PR is another great tactic for getting the name out there. So using um, local newspapers, radio stations, etc., to um, drive your brand awareness to people who are completely unaware of you. And then interest, my PowerPoint has been really sticky today. So once they're in the interest phase, they've learned about you, they know who you are now, so they've heard about your brand. Um, they're in the interest phase, so you've now got their interest. So what can you do at this point to keep their interest? So this is where the blog content, the content on your website, um, how is your, your brand perceived through your website? Is all the information there? Are you asking, are you answering questions for them? Um, are you giving them things that are of value? So things like downloads, things like eBooks, um, free guides and templates, um, your videos and your podcasts, again, those types of things. If you're allowing that person to spend more time with your brand, then you're doing something right. And then when they start to consider you, if they want to buy from you or they're thinking about buying from you, rather, um, what's going to make them jump off the cliff and buy from you? So. Uh, things like case studies, things like your reviews and testimonials. This is where your user-generated content becomes really, really valuable for you. So making sure that you're asking for feedback from your customers and that you're then making that available for other people to read. So even using things like your Facebook page, um, your social media to put the feedback out there, um, allowing people to talk amongst themselves, allowing your customers to communicate with them with each other um, about how fantastic you are and that you should buy from this brand is really, really valuable. And that's something that I always push forward with clients. And the first thing I say is you haven't got any reviews, go out there and collect some reviews because that is really, really valuable. It's what could make you attractive to your competitor. So that's your user-generated content. So let's talk about this process then. So this customer journey, we said, will usually start from Google. So you will ask a question into Google. So I put an example in there, I've asked Google, how to plan marketing content. So I pop that in there. You will sometimes get um, Google will then throw some other um, some other um, ideas for you of what other people have searched for. And then you're given the list. So the directory then shows you the most relevant to your question. And it's also a local, remember that Google's also a local search engine. So it will throw in local um, local answers there too. I put how to plan a marketing, how to plan marketing content into Google, and then I was given these results. Down in the um, very depths of Google, <laughs> I won't tell you how far you will come across <laughs> Fempowered Collective. The reason why is we're a very new brand and we have only just literally started implementing our, um, our content strategy and it is about to ramp up massively in the next month um, with the build up to International Women's Day. So look out for lots of content there. Um, so down in the depths of Google, I'm going to say page two. It's not page two. It's a lot further down. There is Fempowered Collective. So one day this will be on the, on the front page. That is my goal. Um, so there it is. And I go, oh, planning your content for 2021. Fempower Collective. That sounds really interesting. I am going to click on that because it's on the first page of Google. Um, so it must be really authoritative and they must know what they're talking about. So I click on that link and it takes me through to a blog. And this blog has loads of advice, lots of interesting um, um, ideas and tips and hints. These people know exactly what they're talking about. And I'm going to carry on reading. As I get down the page, I come to this. My reading is interrupted by a button that says download your free 2021 calendar. So I click on that button. I go, well, these people know what they're talking about. So this guide must be really, really useful. This planner must be so useful for me. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm, I'm shown a form. I'm going to fill in my details. It's all GDPR compliant so that I know I'm going to get some other marketing communications, but I don't care because this looks like a really good brand to buy from. Um, they know what they're talking about. 
And then, of course, at that point, we have, as Fempower Collective, collected that data. So where I said that that point two, um, when people are interested, you've caught their attention, it is really, really important. The easier that it is for you to capture that customer's detail, that potential customer's details, the better. So now I can send out email um, marketing to this person. Um, it's, you know, like short, this, this is just an example of um, one of our emails that we sent out recently. Uh, oh, it was in December, actually. So it's an email that then is driving people back to our website. So the nice big pink button there that says find out more and that takes them back. So this is where you start to see that organic content is actually a drip feed process and you're basically nurturing the customer over a period of time. So it's not like advertising where you've got that really short sales funnel that you have to capture their attention and get them to buy in a really sort of short space of time. Um, content your content strategy should be over a longer period of time you're nurturing them you keep bringing the back to the, back to your website you're keeping them interested it across all your channels um this is where they start to follow you they start to consider you they'll follow you on instagram they'll follow you on facebook they'll join your facebook group um and you keep putting this content out and then eventually they will come to you and they will become a loyal customer they'll buy from you they'll convert and then they become a loyal customer so Capturing their details is really important. That then allows you to directly market to them through your email marketing, and then you're driving them back to the website. So again, money saving expert, fantastic example. Um, and I love using this as an example, um, like I said before. So interestingly with money saving expert, if you are familiar with the website, anything that you put into Google that is around money saving or anything to do with your finances, you will generally stumble across money saving experts. So the website actually makes income through um, affiliate links using a system called skim links. And I don't know if you've heard of this. So Martin Lewis always maintains that money saving expert is for the people. It is a free service that everybody can use. You go there and you get real information. He has a team of, um, I think, about 100 journalists and researchers who are constantly churning out this um, this content for you to keep going back and getting the right information. You're able to go there, you're able to compare um, credit cards, for example, compare mortgage lenders, um, find out which is gonna be the best for you. The reason why he's an absolute genius is that he doesn't, you know, the website doesn't do any advertising. So they don't sell advertising space um, on their website at all. So unlike when you go to a newspaper, you're littered, you know, you're abs it is absolutely littered with advertising. And sometimes you've got to like scroll through lots of adverts to try and get to the content because you want it to read the article, but you keep getting interrupted with all these adverts. Money Saving Expert doesn't do that. They don't sell any advertising space whatsoever. But what they do do is they generate income through affiliate links. So when you, for example, want to compare um, not percent credit cards, you ask um, Google, you'll find an article on Money Saving Expert. It gives you all the pros and cons of all the best not percent credit cards at the moment. You then go, oh, actually, that Halifax one looks quite good. You click the link from Money Saving Expert. It takes you through to Halifax and then Money Saving Expert earns money from that click. So it's either a commission or they um, will they'll either earn a commission on what you um, what the customer spends uh, or they earn income per click. I think that's how it works. So it it's sort of entirely depends on how they've set that up with their um, affiliate partners so that's how they do it and that's an example of how you can monetize your content if you ever got to the money saving expert level um so i always find that really really interesting that that's how it works so for example just to illustrate you would type into google the best not percent credit cards you're then presented here with the top three results there are adverts. So they've paid to be there. So those are the Google ads. They're your pay-per-click ads. Money Saving Expert is the first um, organic um, listing that appears. Interestingly, Money Supermarket owns Money Saving Expert. So <laughs> you, you can see how they've kind of, without it throwing it in your face, they have sort of monopolized the first page of Google, um, which is why Martin Lewis is an absolute genius. Um, and it, you know, it's really worthwhile spending some time just on the website, just having a look around at how they curate their content and how they're actually generating income from that content, just as a sort of exercise of 
of how to do it right, basically. So linear, um, going back to this example of what we've done for linear. So they've got loads of different articles out on their, their website, loads of different um, guides that you would come across. You would ask Google, um, okay, I'm getting a divorce. What do I do about my mortgage? And you can see there, there is an article. You would then click on linear you come through to this article that give you loads of different advice and then halfway down the article you're interrupted with a button start your 60 second mortgage match um, and that is your data capture so that takes them through the customer through a process of entering their details linear have then captured that detail um, all that data they're able then to market to them now this isn't about when you hear, talk about email marketing and i have this conversation with people quite a lot that People are always afraid of email marketing because of the whole GDPR um, rules that came into effect in 2018. Um, and then people saying that they don't want to spam people. Don't be afraid of using email as a marketing driver because it is really worthwhile. If people are genuinely interested in the content that you put out there, if they're genuinely interested in your brand, they are going to give you their details because they want to find out more. So there's the balance of making sure that your content is valuable enough and that they, that the customer thinks that you know what you're talking about. You're not going to spam them. You genuinely, um, you know, they genuinely want information from you. They genuinely want to know. Um, so PowerPoint keeps sticking. There we go. That's your lead generation. So taking me a slight tangent away from uh, the research phase, but it just sort of gives you an idea down the line of how this, how your content strategy should work. So once you've got all that content on your website, you then feed that into your social media strategy. So then you can, um, you can then use that across your social media to drive people back to your website. Planning then, so step three, what you've got to think about is planning your content strategy, planning your content. Now, we've talked about your objectives, we've talked about your research, now planning. So this is things like your content timelines, the channels that you're going to use, the budget that this is going to take to implement, um, and the skills and resources um, that is needed for that. Oh, I've got a random, random thing there on that, that slide. Um, so one way that you can do this is to create um, a, a if you've ever used a Gantt chart, if you are into project management or you've ever done any form of project management in, in the past, you'll be aware of a Gantt chart. So a Gantt chart, um, they can be really, really detailed. Um, sometimes it's one of those spreadsheets that you look at and go, what on earth is going on here? I've seen some in the past that can include budgets, et cetera, um, include absolutely everything, your skills, your resources, all in one sheet that you can see over a period of time and how the project is going to work. Um, I like to create really simple ones. So for your content strategy, you can create a sort of very basic form of a Gantt chart where it's almost like a calendar. It's a visual guide of the content and the campaigns that you're gonna run, the content that you're gonna need for that campaign. So this is one that I've created in pink, which is very lovely. So for example, if you can see in the campaign row where it says campaigns events, um, I've put in an IWD, so that's an International Women's Day event week. So that's letting me know in those top few rows that there are events coming up and I'm going to need some content around that. So I work back from that date. So International Women's Day is on the 8th of March. I know that's there. I've popped it in the, the thing. There's a visual indicator of when that's coming up in March. I work backwards from that and I know what content I need to build um, across all my channels to be able to deliver a campaign for International Women's Day. So um, this is really basic. This doesn't give you titles. It doesn't give you blog titles. It doesn't give you um, wording for your, um, it doesn't give you any wording for your um, posts that you're putting out on social media, for example. It is literally just a visual indicator. So that campaign is at the beginning of March. All the way through February, I'm gonna run blogs every single week. So I pop them in there. I've given them a color code that matches and then on social media I know through February I'm going to be running um, different call to action posts that are going to get people to go to the website 
I know that at the end of January or towards the end of January, I was going to implement a landing page. So you can see there in week three, um, week commencing the 18th of January under landing page there, um, there was a page there that would go live that would have the sign up in uh, sign up form there for people to put their details in to be able to register for an event. Um, so you work backwards from your campaign and you build it up over layers. And you can actually download this um, this content calendar and lots of information on how to use it from our website as well. So if you haven't done already, please do. Um, it's fempowercollective.co.uk forward slash free resources. And you will find that you will have to put your details in to download <laughs> to download this content, which actually, if you want to do that, um, just to see how I've done it. So how I've actually structured the lead generation campaign. So you go to that um, page, you'll see loads of information on there. There's a form there, you enter your details from that form, you click submit, and then you're taken to a landing page where you're able to download the um, calendar. And then there's also a webinar on there on how to use it. It's only a 10 minute webinar on just how to use the, um, the content calendar. So you can see that process there. So this actually genuinely will really help. Um, you can either do it on spreadsheet or you can use um, subscription services online. So there's one called Asana, which I still use, which is very much, um, if you like your to-do lists and if you like creating task lists, Asana is brilliant. You can create a timeline. Um, uh, sorry, I've just got a question. I've spent this wrong. What is a CRM? It's CRM is a customer relationship management system. So um, HubSpot, for example, you can run marketing e email marketing campaigns through there. You build your email database. It's where you look after your customers. So you can log um, emails between your customers. Um, it's got a servicing um, system on there as well. So if somebody puts in a ticket or somebody needs, you know, one of your customers needs help, you can log it all in there. It's all kept in one log underneath each um, customer. So, you know, um, you know, you can keep track of the, the relationship that you have with that customer. Does that answer that question? Um, I'll continue. So that answers what is a CRM. Thank you for that question. Um, so for your campaign management for building up your campaigns for building up all the resources and skills that you need um things like asana.com and then monday.com is another one it's very similar if you google um if you google um what am i trying to say you know if you look, look for asana and then you'll see loads of other examples um of how to build a campaign um, over time, how to, you know, all your tasks and to-do lists, this all helps with your planning, um, your content management and, um, not your content management. I've been thrown off by that question, sorry. <laughs> all the, um, you know, building your calendar, your skills and your resources and what you need for your strategy. So step four is Producing. So again, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this today because there's the second webinar that's coming at the end of the month. Um, any um, questions about creating content? Um, Andrew, apologies, I have to leave. Oh, no problem, Andrew. Um, I will be doing a recording of this webinar and I will be popping links to that online. And I'm also going to, like I said at the beginning, if you want slides, please do request them and I'll send them. So. Creating content, this webinar is on the 26th of February. So I'll give you a little insight. We're gonna talk about um, how to create, create useful, informative and timely information that is easy to find, it's easy to understand and gives your audience exactly what they want. And that is the answers. So let's feel creative and technical. Step five, so this is the final point that I'm gonna make is all about analyzing and measuring. So as we talked about before, building your objectives um, helps you set a time scale on what you want to achieve with your content strategy. Um, and it's that's really important for analyzing and measuring. So places that you can do all your analyzing and measuring, places that you get all this data of how many people have visited your website, how many people have read it, have read it, read it, that's not good English. How many people have read your content? How many people have um, come through from Facebook? How many have come through from Google? Um, all this information is available on Google Analytics. So your website has to have Google Analytics installed 
Um, and you can find things like the amount of people that have been on the website, their sessions, um, the time that they spent on the site, the click-through rate. Um, click-through rate can be calculated basically by the click-through uh, divided by the number of impressions that your um, site has been seen. I'll show you how you can do that in a minute. Um, your channel acquisitions are where they've come from and the referrals from other sources as well. So if you advertise on other sites, um, on other websites, if you advertise, say, for example, on something like Mumbler, um, which is a, a fantastic directory for mums. Um, we've done advertising through Mumbler with some of our clients before in the past. You can see on your Google Analytics how many clicks have come through from there, so how many referrals you've had from that, that campaign. Um, and then Google Search Console often gets forgotten about when you, you know, you've got Google Analytics that gives you all your data on there. Google Search Console actually gives you all the data from Google itself. So how many people have clicked through from a Google listing specifically, um, how many times your brand has been seen on Google specifically. And that then also gives you a click through rate. So your average click through rate um, as well, which is a nice metric to have a look at to see how, um, how well your your campaigns are doing. So that is everything in a nutshell. I know that is a lot of, of content for a content strategy webinar. So I am open now to any questions. So if anybody's got any questions, please pop it in the chat box. Um, otherwise, if I have fried your brain a little bit, I'm sure I haven't, I'm sure, I'm sure you, uh, <laughs> you know, it, this is, you know, there's a lot to do. And I think that's something that you have to remember with marketing is that there is so much um, so many skills, so much that, you know, you need to be involved in, you need to have an understanding of so many different aspects of digital marketing, you need to, you know, you need to know how to work a website, you need to know how to log in, create the content, how to post it properly, how to change your metadata, there is so much involvement that is needed with digital marketing, um, that it is impossible to know it all, um, unless you do that for a living which um, I myself do. And, you know, I know that we've got some marketeers um, on the, the webinar today that will be able to help as well. So there's so many, you know, talented freelancers out there um, who has all this knowledge. You, if you are a business owner, you're not necessarily gonna know all this as well as running your business and the, the job that you actually do. So it is a lot to take in, but hopefully what this webinar has done is that it has, um, you know, it's given you an idea of actually how much involvement is needed. So a couple of questions. Is Google Analytics free? Yes, it is. It is absolutely free. Um, so if you just, if you Google Google Analytics <laughs> um, and you set up an account, you'll, you'll just be taken to a landing page that says start a big, there'll be a big blue button. You click on that and then it takes you through the process. Now with Google Analytics, there is a little bit of development knowledge that you need. Again, this is something else that you need to know because there is um, the implementation. So it gives you um, a little snippet of code that you have to copy and paste and put onto the back end of your website. So um, again, if you've got some development knowledge there, it's really easy to do. It's not too complicated, but it is something that you, know, you need to understand the, the back end and the inner workings of your website to be able to implement. Uh, what if the potential customer is not aware that my unique service actually exists? Um, so that is where a content marketing strategy or just a marketing strategy is really important. So what, Harold, if you don't mind, are you able to just give me an idea of what your, your service actually is? Because what you're saying there if the potential customer is not aware that my unique service actually exists, what you're saying there is that you need to do some marketing. <laughs> is the simple question, uh, is the simple answer. Harold, if you give me a little bit more details, then um, that would be fantastic. And then I'll be able to give you some examples, Harold. Or if you want to drop me an email um, and we can have a further chat, then please do. Um, I have two emails, so obviously I've got Sophie at fempoweredcollective.co.uk and I've also got Sophie at the Soapy Group. Um, I am the same person, if you email either of those, it will come through to me. Um, so if you've got any further questions or if you want to go through some, any part of today in any more detail, do just drop me an email. Um, please also connect with me on LinkedIn. I love making 
connections. Um, you can also just drop me a message on LinkedIn as well if you connect with me. Um, and we can open up a conversation and uh, I'll give you some more hints and tips. Absolutely fine with that, not a problem. Um, but I think that really concludes today. I'm gonna step, all right, Harold, yes, please do email me and we'll have a, we'll have a better conversation there because I think I just need a little bit more info about what you do. Um, I look forward to that. So, Michelle, thank you, Sophie, that was really useful. Oh, bless you, not a problem. Um, I've really enjoyed today. Awesome, Sophie, my head is full now. Sorry, Sam, I didn't mean to fill your brain on a Friday. Um, <laughs> hopefully I filled it with good things um, and lots of good information. It is a lot, like I said, you know, it, you can't sum up marketing, you can't sum up content marketing in an hour. So this hopefully is just giving you sort of a run through of the process, everything that you need to be able to um, build a content strategy. See you on the 26th, absolutely. No problem, Peter, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I'll assume if there's not many questions, um, I'll assume that I've hopefully given you enough information to go away with, but please do email me, like I say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lots of thank yous. Oh, bless you all. You've all been lovely. I've not had any heckles. I'm quite surprised. <laughs> Normally I'll get all sorts of heckles and people um, challenging me, which I do enjoy, um, but I've actually quite enjoyed today because I've just been able to crack on heckle. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thank you all so much. I'll stay on a little bit longer. I'll stay on for another couple of minutes and um, see you all off or wave, virtually wave you all off. I didn't put my camera on today. I've just realized sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't feel like you needed to see my face. Brilliant, thank you all so much, that's been lovely. <laughs> thank you, Lynn. Oh, I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Perfect, right then. Um, I am going to disappear now, like I said, just drop me an email, connect with me on LinkedIn and uh, I'll answer any more questions. Thanks very much, guys.